Welcome to my review of the Teresa Mini PC. We're going to take a look at what you can do with this PC that only costs about $125. We're going to be looking at things that I've put it through the test with already. Things like web browsing, office work, YouTube and media playing. How well can it game through emulators, cloud gaming services. What kind of wireless technology connections can be used with this such as Bluetooth, keyboards and mice, Bluetooth controllers, how fast is the Wi-Fi on this, how well can it output to 4K TVs, is it Visa mount compatible, we'll find out all this and more, stay tuned, gotta check out my review. Alright, I'm gonna be unboxing the mini PC here. Open it up, you see the Intel Inside logo, the MMC flash memory. First thing I see is the actual computer case wrapped up here. Let's take it out. Alright, here I am taking a look at the little mini PC. There's the VGA port. On one side, this is the back side now. You have two HDMI's right here. You have the Ethernet port, a headset port. This is a lock for security. If you buy one of those lock cables to lock it down on a table, it has a USB port, power port, and this here is to release the top. You can unscrew this and then push this this way. I'm going to try that in a little while to put a hard drive in here. If you want to upgrade the the hard drive storage space on it. Around front, three more USBs, the power button, and a SD card slot to expand memory that way as well. So a nice little unit. It also came with this metal piece here. This is for us, it's a Visa plate. You can use that to mount it. To mount it on the back of a TV. So if you wanted to mount it that way, you can do it that way. I also noticed on here, it has these two little holes right here, so you can mount it straight on the wall, it looks like as well. I might try that, to have it on the wall, like this, up against the wall. So a nice little unit. Uh, here on bottom, you can also see a little fan vent. Let's see what else it comes with. This box here, should be power. That is the power supply. Just a little standard AC adapter power supply. And there was also an HDMI cable in there. Alright, since I plan to put a little SSD hard drive in here, this holds a 2.5 inch hard drive, it says. Put the screwdriver in here. Unscrew it. See how I'm doing it here. Screw out, make sure it doesn't get lost. Hit that, you see how it opened up. What do we see in there? Space for the 2.5 inch hard drive. There's the cable here that will attach to it for SATA. Pretty nice setup, nice and easy for expansion. There's the top, just one screw, easy to do, it does it. And when I get the hard drive in, I've ordered it already. I'm going to install it in here and we'll see how it works after that. It was just a little piece of tape holding this down. I wanted to take a look at it, show you guys. As you can see here, it has the SATA power and data, both of them here. So it's all in one. So when you get your hard drive, both things are right there. Easy, plug in and put it back in. Put the top back on, screw it in. And we'll be ready to go. Pretty nice. All right, so I ordered this little 2.5 inch hard drive. You can use any of these in this system. I told you on the back of the box. See here it says that this system supports 2.5 inch hard drives up to two terabytes. The one I got there is a 500 gig. 
here is the actual drive. You get around 2.5 inch like this. SATA. You see the connection right here. Match up with the yeah, right here. A little piece of tape in there. And that would hold the cable down. Just match this up here. This goes this way. Just plug it in. You can see here is the connection connector. There's the power and data in one. Just connect that. Just like so, snaps right in. Oh, it's connected. Make sure it's in there good. Let's get this piece of tape. It came in here, lift it up again. See, we're gonna fit this back in here now. Let's see, so it pushes in like so. Like that fits right in there really easily once you push the cables in so that should be in there ready to go it should set up good then you take the top of the case push it back in and make sure no one can pop that open a mistake. Got it up a little screw. Which I have right here. Pop that back in, you'll be done. Put it right in there. Twist it around a couple times. All done. That's it. The hard drive's in. Next thing to do is to start hook it up to your monitor or TV, whatever you're gonna connect this to. And start it up. Okay, I am mounting. This bracket here behind my television. You see the TV's here. Zoom out. TV's here. So I'm gonna have this behind the TV. You can have the little mini PC hidden behind the TV this way, out of the way, and connect to these ports. And here you can see the computer mounted on the wall now. But when you look from over here, it's hidden. So you can do that kind of thing. Of course, you'd want to do cable management, stuff like that if you really wanted to make it clean. But for now, I'm just testing this out, seeing how it works. And I'm happy with it behind the TV like that, hidden away. This is what you see when the computer is loading up. You see the brand name of it. You see me in the reflection. Now it's telling me just a moment, so it should be loading up the computer. Had it plugged in to my TV by HDMI. You saw it's mounted behind the TV up there. This is how it looks when it's powered on. This is mounted on the wall. See that cool light coming from it. Okay, so now it's asking about internet and it's detected my Wi-Fi. Grab the mouse right here. And connect. This is the setup process. It comes with Windows 10 Pro. So it's automatically in there when you start the machine up. You just go through the basic Windows 10 installation. Like this, there it is. There's my desktop, that's my custom background that I use. So it'll look different than yours. Okay, the first thing we're going to take a look at is how much space you have on your hard drive. So Windows is installed and you can see this computer comes with a 64 gigabyte ROM in it for the C drive. You have 34 gigs so you'd probably want to get a hard drive to connect to it, either external, flash drive, or you can put a 2.5 inch SSD in it. That's what I've done and I'm going to see about uh, formatting that right now. 
As you saw, I had installed the 2.5 inch hard drive, 500 gigabyte SSD. I went into disk management just now to take a look and it recognizes it right there. The only thing is you have to format it for it to be usable. So now it's time to format that. Then we'll have 500 gigabytes pretty much of space to install whatever you want on. I'm transferring some files over from my USB flash drive using the USB 3.0 port on the mini PC. You can see the speeds that I'm getting. This of course that's dependent on your flash drive. So setting up some uh, I'm gonna try to set up some emulators here to try out. See that this is uh, in 4K, it's on my 4K TV, so you have this running on 4K resolution, and it's working well. All right, we're just looking at the Windows menu, just so you get a, a sense of how the mini PC runs. You can see the menus in the Windows start bar run smoothly and quickly. There's not any junk files on here, it's just Windows 10 Pro. I installed this up here, open office, so you have a whole office suite to do your work. Didn't come with any extra stuff on here that could get in the way. I installed this browser, I like this Opera browser, it runs well on here. The web browser that I chose to use is Slimjet right here. It's called Slimjet, it loads the web pages uh, without using too much RAM. Since you only have 4 gigabytes of RAM, you might look into one of those type of browsers. It still works pretty well with Edge and the more mainstream browsers, but my choice is something like this. Okay, we're gonna take a look at some uh, web browsing. I'm looking at the Logitech website here. You can scroll easily through websites. On the mini PC, I'm using this wireless mouse right here. Logitech works great with the mini PC. Paired with a USB receiver and one of the USB ports. I'm just setting it up here. Take a look at another website. Another tab here. This is the ESPN website. Click something. that this is using my 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection <clears throat> I'm gonna see how it loads video pages load them pretty quickly not bad at all setting up all the uh, little previews not too bad the browser moves quickly I have three tabs open Right now, this one here is YouTube. Let's click this. Let's see how the video plays. Alright, this is how YouTube looks on the mini PC. Add there, but let's get the video rolling. Also loom larger over its peers. Literally, this thing is massive. However, what the PlayStation 5 lacks in subtlety, it more than makes up for in potential, thanks in part to its amazingly fast SSD, but mostly to its truly remarkable new controller, the DualSense. While a good deal of what folks are going to be able to squeeze out of 2020's salvo of shiny new hardware is all next to some degree by the screen. I think they what own, the uh, mini PC, PC can do on video. It democratizes a next gen gaming cool. experience for all, delivering an amazing new level and of the light out so you can see. It really needs to be felt to be believed. It runs the video smooth. I'm pause here, but it runs the video smooth. No problem there, no lagging, none of that, no stuttering. See, I'm using this mini keyboard, wireless. It's also paired with the mini PC, works great. And I just wanted to show you the speeds of the web page loading and search engine loading. 
this Wikipedia there. Real quick, it loads the page. There's regular browsing and text pages. You see it loaded that up real quick. So it's pretty speedy. It doesn't have any slow load times on regular uh, web pages. There's a lot of video you saw like on the ESPN one here. It took a couple seconds to load the videos in. You only have four gigabytes of RAM, but it's more than enough to still web browse pretty easily. You see it's still loaded this up nicely. We were able to watch YouTube fine. Let's put another video here just to see. Click this one right here. <clears throat> this is loading the next video. It is finally time. After the game previews and teases and that hardware reveals and that software reveals and teardowns, it's time to review it, the PlayStation 5. And yeah, so it's loaded big, it, but it's also loaded the video deal. fine. Every big console refresh has improved so this is graphics, perfect for we're going to talk about all watching that. YouTube, you web browsing. On a PC. The point of console isn't just it. to be a PC that's attached else. to your TV. All right, I just paired my Xbox controller. You can see there. So you can pair your controllers easily because the mini PC has Bluetooth. It's ready to go. There you see it. So I'm gonna test it out. Okay, I'm gonna test this emulator out on the mini PC. My controller here that I just paired. So you can use it. You can use the controller to control it right there. And this is the emulator. There's the menu where you can select the games you want to play. There's many different types of uh, these emulators and things like this. You can press A and try to go in the game. And you see here the game loads up. Now you get to play. There you go, mission one. Just a little test to show the gameplay. It works smoothly, it's good. It's like the arcade days. We play here, the controller. over here some fighting cool fighting games I'm just going here to test it out see how this plays sorry about the lighting right there I have a light above uh, where I have this going right now it's loading it up Classics. And this is just a demonstration to show that the mini PC is pretty capable, even though the specs are not super high. It's more than enough to enjoy these old classics. It's pretty cool. Look at this. Enjoy emulators on here just fine. In games like this might not be the main reason you get it, it might be you put it on a TV like this as a little arcade machine. Okay, we're testing out another little emulator that I got on here just to see how it works with this one. This is a Neo Geo game.
It runs this well too. So I'm just running in this size screen just as a demonstration. So that works awesome. See how this one goes. There we go. You see it plays really well. Using my wireless controller again, Bluetooth, right here. Running the menus. No slowdown or anything, so the machine's pretty capable of playing all your favorite emulators. Let's just go into the match, you can see. Just to verify that it works well, you can see how quick everything's moving well, fast, no slowdown or anything. So it really impresses me. You could use this, this mini PC like this. Or you could, that means you could put it into an arcade cabinet or any of that kind of thing and it would perform well. You put it in the full screen, it still runs perfectly on this mini PC. No slowdown at all. Okay, another use for this mini PC. People might want to use it as a media center to watch shows and videos and movies. So you can install a media player like this, Cody, or many other, many others just like it. You see it loads up quickly on here. Let's go to the menus. I have a couple add-ons here like Funimation and other ones here that allow you to, to watch movies and shows. This is the preview. You can see how it uh, goes through here and how you can load stuff up. Works very well. And on the media player, once you have something ready to play, let's see how it plays on here. You hit play. And there we go. This is playing streaming on the media player Cody. See, it, it streams smoothly. No lag, no buffering. This, this media play, this uh, mini PC is awesome for playing your media on. You can use it as a media player like this. It's another great use for it. it has your flying colors for this. Okay, we're going to be testing out another feature here. I've installed Steam on the mini PC. And I have it also installed on my, my main uh, gaming desktop in my other room. So Steam has a feature where you can stream the game from your more powerful computer to a laptop or to a mini PC like this. So let's say you want to play on your TV instead of on your computer. So let's see how it works. Are able to play the game fine? The Steam game is pretty awesome. Through the mini computer this way. That's a little bit. Okay. And with the wireless controller, even better. Steam on the mini computer this way, which is great. There's a turn based game, so you move turn by turn like that. Okay, the next thing we're going to try on the mini PC is Google Stadia. Here we go. We're in Google Stadia on the mini computer. There we go. No bomber now. A bunch of stuff. Now we're going to try to run Power Rangers through Stadia. See how it works. There we 
Ja, Leute, da. Next time, Google Stadia. I'm playing on my Wi Fi upstairs. We'll never give so up the connection isn't fight. perfect, but it's playable, and you can always switch to Ethernet if you need a faster connection. But it's working well wireless in my Stadia. with the wireless controller this is us playing human fall flat on google stadia on the mini computer it's pretty stable working well there's another game on stadia playing on the mini computer hello neighbor <laughs> playing well my son's playing yeah, i'm laughing in the background and there's the mini computer right there connected to the tv playing through Wi-Fi okay another use you might want to use this for is to get some work done this uses a regular home PC to do homework office work you can see here I loaded up open office which is a free version of a uh, office suite you can use instead of this Microsoft office as well with word and all that but I chose to use this I like this program you see here you can do text documents it's like that loads up quickly in the full screen and you can do your homework hello my homework just like that you can get your documents done this is on a tv a 4k tv that i'm doing it you can do it on a monitor computer monitor or anywhere else Everything works well, the menus and everything. Everything loads up quickly. There's your spreadsheet like Excel. These are just loads everything up easily. So go by default. There you see. If you want to make a presentation, there you go. Loads everything up really quickly. I'm really impressed with this. Okay, I'm doing an Xfinity speed test through my browser to see what kind of speeds I'm getting through my Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz connection on the mini PC. This is wireless through my 5 gigahertz. This is coming from upstairs to downstairs. The signal is decent. And it gave me 115.6, which is fast enough for 4K video and everything else you need to do. You could always connect uh, if you needed another wireless access point to make a stronger connection or faster. You do that as well, but this is sufficient for me. You got 115.6, that's a good speed. That's what I'm using this for. As you can see, you can browse, do everything fine on this machine. This is the setup I'm using right now with the mini PC keyboard and mouse wireless you can also use this as the mouse pad works great so that's something you can think about if you plan to buy this when the mini pc is running and uh doing some work you can hear the fan in there it's not too loud but you can hear it going pretty awesome little mini pc you can take it off the mount anytime. It comes with a little mount. You can take it to another room if you want to. Put it right back on easily. Like that. Secured. I really am enjoying this little mini PC. It does way more things than you'd expect. For a little bit over $100, you can play games, do work, browse the web, watch videos, watch movies, 
stream shows. It's a really nice option you can have, especially connected to something like your TV in a living room. All right, to end the video, we're gonna take a look at some of the hardware inside of the mini PC. As you can see, it has the Intel Celeron N3350 CPU, Intel HD Graphics 500, all of that was sufficient to run emulators and things that required processing power for the uh, different kind of things that you would do on this type of machine. The four gigabytes of RAM, it was also enough, so I didn't have any problems. If you needed to do any of the things that you've seen in the video, all of this is sufficient. I added the 500 gigabyte SSD that you see in the storage area there myself. Finally, we see the motherboard manufacturer and the Windows 10 Pro that comes pre-installed. All of this can be updated through the Intel website. You can update all the drivers and everything. I was able to do that fine. So that's the end of my review. Hope you enjoy checking out everything you do for a little bit over $100. Pretty awesome. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this review. Also drop me a like and follow me on Twitter. You can catch all of those details down below.